Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast, the podcast dedicated to simplifying the commercial real estate industry for the masses. Each week, we sit down with industry experts to dissect the many facets of commercial real estate and extract valuable lessons you can apply to your business. Whether you're a new or seasoned business owner or investor, the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast will be your go-to resource for all your commercial real estate needs. Now, here are your hosts, Rafael Collazo and Jeff Walston. Welcome to Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rafael Collazo, here with my co-host, Jeff Walston. How's it going, my friend? It's going great. Uh, we just came from your book launch last night. I don't know if all the listeners know, but uh, Rafael's wrote two books in the commercial uh, sector. One is Before You uh, Lease That Building. And then last night he just launched uh, Before You Buy That Building. So uh, you guys should go check it out. He, he's got it for sale on Amazon uh, and uh, take a read and let him know what you think. But other than that, business is great. Uh, it's going well. Um, just, you know, keeping all the clients happy and uh, running around, you know, keeping that material mayhem under control because that's one of my big jobs now is tracking down um, material because, uh, you know, there's, people that doesn't work and uh the, you know just less and less material out there I'm, I'm not sure what's still going on but yeah it's uh it's a it's a thing but other than that everything's great what about you Raphael? how's it going over there great great uh like you said a book launch was yesterday so really awesome to celebrate with you and and everyone else that that showed up but it was really a humbling experience to see how many people were there to support um you know before you buy that buildings the book's name and it's focused on helping business owners that are looking to buy commercial real estate for their business use. Uh, so, you know, hopefully it becomes, it adds some value. If you're a business owner, investor, or e even a broker, it's, I think it'd be helpful for you to kind of understand the process from start to finish. And obviously it's location specific, but uh, you know, it's all, it should be a value uh, to, yeah. to any of those individuals. And, you know, it was just a phenomenal time. Business is going well. I'm working a lot on the leasing side, especially on the retail end. Uh, as of late, I'm working with a lot with restaurants and, you know, uh, I work with Closing Sore Tattoo Shop. Uh, I've got a client that we're looking for a uh, wholesale distribution for liquor. So they have like a liquor warehouse type thing where, you know, convenience stores come and, and you know, just buy these, 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 these alcohol, uh, different types of alcohols. But, you know, really the retail has been the focus that I've been on over the last several months. And speaking of retail and really just a phenomenal conversation, we actually had Matthew Ridley with Prime Store Development. Uh, which is uh, a, a company that represents uh, some landlords in in LA. So he works a lot with the retail leasing side. So a lot of our discussion uh, during the the, the 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 podcast was pertaining to the retail industry. And so we start off by first learning a little bit more about his backstory. You know, he always had kind of an interest in the retail industry, and it'll kind of explain his story as to how that was the case. Uh, we also talked about some of the early struggles he faced in his career. You know, being in the brokerage space is not an easy career. And so he does talk about the navigation of that, you know, those those early difficult waters uh, to make sure that he got where he where we wanted to go. Along with that, we talked about the strategies that he incorporates to effectively lease space. I mean, you know, you kind of, you know, retrofitting spaces based on tenants that leave and trying to think about ways to attract the right type of tenant to the space, because, you know, you don't want to just put any random tenant in, in, a, in a space, in particular, when you're talking about retail, because it is an ecosystem and, and tenants feed off each other. And, you know, ultimately, you know, making sure that you pick the right tenant is a very important part of the puzzle. And that's what he talked about during this, this podcast as well. And then finally, we touched on a little bit on his background. He actually has a modeling and a TV commercial background. Uh, he's been doing that for several years and actually many years. Uh, and so he kind of talks a little bit about how the lessons that he's learned from that career has helped him immensely in his uh, his brokerage career as well. So found it extremely insightful. I especially love the fact that he had that film and television background because I don't think we've had anyone on the podcast that has had that background. So the, the insights that he shared there were very interesting. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, he's a very interesting guy, especially his background, like you said. Um, and it, it it always did. I always did wonder as a kid and even an adult, like how how do these actors just you know as able to run through a mall entire mall that actually we can walk through you know around like how does that deal work out and come to find out uh call matthew and he can set that up <laughs> so yeah, he, that was a pretty cool thing yeah yeah um, he'd love he'd love to host you at one of his malls if you're looking if you're if you're yeah. a big time director and listen to this you need to call matt and he'll he'll yeah. make sure that you're taken care of on that front 
yeah, he's already got it set up and everything, staging areas, all that stuff. So um, other than that, yeah, he's a great guy. And then I just wanted to say that uh, this show is free, but there is a cost. And the cost is, as you're a listener, is to recommend one other person to listen to our podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we definitely appreciate all the people that have you have already recommended uh, and uh, even the people that has given five star reviews. We appreciate you as well. Uh, that's definitely helped us grow and we want to continuously grow so we can reach and reach more and more people uh, across North America, even, uh, you know, around the world. So to, to get all these messages out to help just one person. So. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And, 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 you know, we, we are very much humbled by the the reach that we've gotten over the last several months. And a big part of that is because you keep sharing and, and engaging with the podcast. And another yeah. ask that I'd like to ask is if you could leave us a five-star review, that would makes a world of difference. I think we're well over 50 reviews now. It's really awesome to see that we're continuing to climb as far as the, the review counts concerned. So if you haven't already, please don't do it while you're driving. So, you know, I don't want you to get in an accident, but if you can, once you do yeah. stop, you know, if you have, you have a second to be able to do so, please leave a five-star review. It does mean the world to us and we would greatly appreciate it. So again, thank you all so much for your support. We are truly humbled by it, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this podcast. Well, Hey Matt, good to see you this fine afternoon. Thank you so much for having me, Raphael and Jeff. It's so great to be here. Yeah, thank you for taking the time to, to be on the show. Thank you so much. Um, I do love the podcast. Um, great wisdom and knowledge, great guests. So very honored for you to have me on as a guest. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and for those of you guys who don't know, Matt's tuning in from sunny California. Um, you know, it's a little dry out there right now. So hopefully you guys get some rain here soon. I know it's been, you know, it's 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 been a, it's been a long time coming, but hopefully you guys can... Uh, get some relief on that front yes have, have a little be a little more balanced so <laughs> yeah hopefully um you know a little bit of uh, maybe what seattle's rain is not all of it you know we can mm -hmm. you know be more balanced and even <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely well matt we greatly appreciate your time you know we know you're a busy professional over in, in california so we do take appreciate the time to be able to come in and share some insights with our audience so one of the things we typically like to do when we first uh interview individuals is to learn a little bit more about them so if you don't mind kind of sharing your backstory i think that'd be great Awesome. So for me, my journey in commercial real estate actually began when I was in high school back in 2001. Um, so clear back then, um, I was seeing different malls around Columbus, Ohio, uh, my hometown, Go Bucks, and uh, they were evolving in a different way. Um, the malls built by the Richie Jacobs Group, um, who had owned the uh, Cleveland MLB team um, at that time, um, were actually changing when there were newer malls that were opening. And I said, you know, what could what could be done? Because these neighborhood centers that I grew up with um, are, you know, not, they're losing stores and they're not changing. So for fun, I would actually seek out what tenants, you know, I would put in those malls. So from that, um, that just helped me to, even though I wasn't doing it professionally, say, oh, I think this could be a career path you know, this is something that I could do. So from that, um, I just kept up over the many years, you know, with industry news and notes with retail restaurant, and, you know, did work at Chase Bank for seven years, um, some, you know, like a few years after um, I got started in college, and always just networked with ICSC and ULI professionals to try to get in the business. Um, you know, meeting up with them and discussing what the industry's like and, you know, if I should be a broker versus maybe a leasing agent and with a developer. So that was when I knew I was like, okay, because of brokerage, it can be tricky with how long it may take, even when you do all the work to get your first deal done, like a year, year and a half was the mm -hmm. consistent uh, answer I was getting. So yeah. that's when I just kept networking and then after seven years at Chase Bank, lo and behold, I was able to get a residential real estate position um, doing apartment leasing. Did that for about a year, still knowing I definitely needed to be on the retail real estate side. And fortunate opportunity came up um, at uh, one of the former Richley Jacobs malls, um, and I was able to become a specialty leasing manager. So there I was able to lease inside uh, the mall have different tenants come in that were, did some longer term, um, but very heavy on the local leasing. And then that parlayed into me coming out to Los Angeles to be able to have more opportunities and be able to you know, continue to push towards my ultimate goal of being in permanent leasing, which is deals that are over 12 months and working with those bigger brands that are on the national level. 
And so I did that um, over the local leasing level for um, two major properties uh, between 2018 and 2020. And the pandemic had hit and, you know, there was a big layoff um, with uh, the company that was um, doing the malls I was with. And then here you go with uh, Prime Store, great opportunity. Um, so I've been with them since October of 2020. Um, I do lease at Panorama Mall um, out in the Van Nuys area and also Selmar Town Center out in the San Fernando Valley. And it's you know great. I'm able to focus uh, very heavy on the local leasing at Panorama and then still curate local, but I uh, get things going at Silmar Town Center um, in a more permanent leasing capacity. So I love the business. Um, going on nine years, it's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's it's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No, I was just I was just liking like your your story and kind of like how it just you constantly was building and going up the ladder. That, that's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And, and the fact that you were when you, you kind of already had this the inner workings of of a, of a retail agent early on in your life where you were always thinking, oh, well, I wonder what can go there, you know, because, yeah. you know, a lot a lot of the people that we interview, you know, they it's not necessarily something they think about early on in their life. It's, it's something they kind of fall into. But the fact that you already had those germinations of the idea early on is pretty cool. You know, I think it just goes to show that you're you picked the right way that you picked the right path. So. Yeah. Thank you. It's honestly what I heard years ago that either you are in the business, like somehow you happen to migrate or you're kind of like pushed or like kind of fall into it. And, you know, it's almost like you're a lifer, you know, like, you know, folks do it and you will meet people who do it like 20 years, 30 years. So um, that's what appealed to me, too, was uh, some of the longevity I saw around Columbus and even throughout the industry. So definitely it's great. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. 50 years for yeah. some people, I feel like. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> there's some, <laughs> there's some people here. There's some people yeah. here. It's like, my gosh, they've been here since like the, the 60s. They've been, they've been, uh, yeah, I know. they're still yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so yeah. true. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, so I think the question for me, uh, Matt, is why not residential? I mean, what, what kept you from, you know, throwing up a house or two, you know, putting a for sale sign out front of one of those? You know, I do love working with businesses because it is a part of, honestly, and, and it's so true because the American dream, uh, because I loved your episode with Beth Azor, that's honestly the way I feel as well. You have so much emphasis since that early 2000s when I studied the business of emphasizing local leasing or even hashtag support local, and which can even parlay into a permanent lease. So I always feel like the way that business can be fickle is easier for me to like jive with and flow with than the residential fickle, because there is gonna have to be a business to be had in order to sustain livelihood and even like keep market share in a business uh, versus residential, where maybe it's gonna be that, you know, you have this big supply of maybe apartments or like homes, and then yeah. it may not sell or may, people may not be interested and you have to bring down the price. Um, so I, I just love uh, being in the thick also of what's happening because we have an ICSC um, as the community rebranded that name to be able to emphasize marketplaces. Marketplaces leads to everything that's encompassing when you grocery shop, buy your clothes, even to when you get your car serviced and when you go out and spend time with your loved ones in a gathering place at a restaurant. And, uh, you know, I just love that. It's just the uh, cutting edge of what's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, and, and go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. No, you're fine. Go ahead. No, no, I, I had the same type of thing where you had mentioned, I, I'm, I've focused a lot more on the retail side as of late. And, you know, that's the type of, you know, the reason why I like it so much is you get to see so many different types of businesses and you get a feeling for what, you know, a, a good, if you put something that's a good fit within a center, it almost flourishes because it it's a symbiotic relationship between the existing tenants on site as well so you know and and the stories that you you get from people who started a lot of a lot of these uh entrepreneurs start i mean they start with nothing and then they build something of significance and you know if they've been in it for many many years they're able to leave something to their heirs and their kids and it's 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 really inspirational uh some of the people that i've met through the through the last couple of years that i've been doing it and all that started with an idea and then they them just kind of manifesting it in the world so so great. I love it. And you'll just all the even when it's digitally native, where you hear the um, the fundraising and, you know, companies that are securing, you know, lots of capital. It's like that's still 
so motivating and energetic because someone has a good idea, whether it's the way you do food, that's quick service style, that's revolutionary. I love the story of Blaze Pizza. I love the story of Warby Parker. Um, I do love the story of different pop-ups that come in and then they're doing so great, need to do a perm lease and need to hire more staff, look at other locations. It's, it's so great. Absolutely. No, I couldn't yeah. agree more. So one of the things I'm, I'm curious about, and this is one of the questions we like to ask uh, the, the, our audience member or our, our guests is that, you know, the commercial real estate industry, as you alluded to earlier, it, it can be a brutal business, especially as you get started, because there's a long lead time to really getting some momentum built. So what are some of the, I guess, you know, struggles that you faced early on in your career and how are you able to navigate those? Honestly, you know, I think one of the things was um, the first mall I went to, there was an empty anchor for a number of years in the wing where it's honestly on the outside, it was like the face of the mall because you're going down the main artery of Hamilton Road and then, you know, you do see a vacant department store. So that wing had challenges to be able to get tenants inside in that wing because they saw that the traffic flow was just not there. So that was honestly part of why the local leasing or specialty leasing was very pivotal because you're gonna have, in, in my experience, honestly, in that case, it was a good two years that I, it took to get a deal where it was going to be something different in the center, you, you know, not the usual repeat of like, if you already have women's apparel, not more of that, you already have athletic shoes, not more of that. And being able to, you know, have a deal that pencils where the economics makes sense. So my overcoming it was just canvassing. Uh, just like just like we hear, and um, again, I reference Beth Azor, you canvas online and in person go to the conventions, let, you know, cause that's what I do. Um, the expos that happen around town, I go there where they're having booths, make sure I introduce myself, come with many business cards and would let them know like, you know, they could be perfect for a pop-up or even something longer term if they wanted. And from there, that's where really things can kind of fill in. And I'm very proud to say when I did put in a photography client in one of the spaces, where, you know, they wanted their own space instead of just like kind of out of home and like um, almost ad hoc at other events. Uh, they did the space very polished, very nice. They worked for a, a national retailer, so they knew exactly how to make it work with lighting and the fixtures. And then the top shopping center in the region, a rep from them came and looked at that tenant. They made a point to come in the mall and see what they were doing to see how their setup was. So, you know, that's really how you should fight through it is it's going to be probably some time, but you keep really true to that local leasing routes. Um, I still went after the nationals and asked. So I was, you know, preparing for any answer, but parallel to that, I knew that you have to stick with um, what's around the way and what's happening uh, more close to the center. Absolutely. That, that's a great, that's a great insight. And, 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 and you kind of, we kind of alluded to it earlier is, you know, if, if the, the, the tenant necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be a national tenant, but it, it, it's got to be a good fit for the ecosystem that's present within that center. And you had mentioned, you know, if you have a women's apparel clothing store, you know, you're probably not going to want another one next door because they're going to cannibalize each other's sales, whereas maybe yeah. another type of, you know, apparel, I mean, I, I don't even know, I don't know what the pairing of that particular you know, those different businesses could be, but there could be another pairing where it's like, oh, you know, maybe accessories while well, you, you're going into the store, buying your, 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 your dress. And, oh, by the way, now let's, let's walk over to grab our earrings or whatever else, you know, yes. so that may be a better fit. Um, and, and that, that takes creativity and thought process. And I'm sure there's times where a tenant goes in and you think they're going to do well and they don't. And then there's other times where maybe you put a tenant somewhere and they somehow flourish and you're like, all right, well, I guess the, I didn't know what I, you know, so yeah. it's kind of interesting. I love it. I love it. Because honestly, that's what happened is um, went to an expo in 2019 and I just been doing my usual canvassing because, you know, I got to see about what could fit in an inline in a kiosk or a cart. So mm -hmm. there was this long line at this one um, booth that sold uh, mystery boxes. And also, um, I think they also did have their Funko Pops there as well. So um, I was like, not to cut the line, but I said, I wanted to see, you know, if I can talk to you about coming to our center, I think it'll be great. And then, you know, the owner came over and they were like, you know, we've actually been looking about mall location. I said, this is fantastic. And then they had said, when I toured them inside of a space that actually had a column in the middle, that was a mirror. And so many people had told my boss at the time, this is an obstruction. Like you have this, 
you because you know when you visualize it you walk in the space and then the column is right down the middle and it's like that's the sightline visibility i need and it's right there blocking it so fortunately this client said well we can just put flat screen tvs on it you know we can make it work and merchandise the windows properly so it was just you know phenomenal the way it came together and they wound up for those who know the terminology they exceeded their break point during the summer which is so rare that's what was phenomenal they actually came in did that and just totally, you know, exceeded expectations. And it's like, wow, people love their Funkos. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. And for yeah. those of you guys who are listening regarding breakpoint, it's typically in a percentage lease where after a certain threshold, once you eclipse it, then the, the tenant starts to pay a percentage of their gross sales to, to the, the landlord. Um, but if you, if you break, if you hit your break point, you're doing extremely well most of the time. And so I'm sure that the tenant was probably okay with, you know, yes. making making the extra yeah. payments. So that's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> so man, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I we we talked about like you talked about a strategy of getting one type of uh tenant in in in, in your space. So if you're a leasing agent and you're going to reach down in there with your toolbox and and to get an, another strategy that you can give to uh, our audience here of how you can effectively fill a space. Is there uh, one thing that pops to comes to mind for you? Honestly, it's being nimble with the time frame and the economics, because you know I would always try to aim and pitch it in the beginning of my career, of like, oh, you know, we could do a twelve month, and I was getting some feedback that said. Uh, I don't know about 12 months because that's going to lock me in and then my expenses could change. And then do I have enough staff? Because even before the pandemic, um, as they say, like the great resignation in yeah. retail and restaurants, I had always heard the bit of an issue with hiring good people, like good people, you know, key holders, yeah. people hold your money and they right. would have security cameras and they're really to watch their associates, not necessarily the customers. So I honestly would say they're going to show you maybe a list of, reasons that are true why they can't lease with you and you know try to come up with solutions and help and that's going to really help to be the guiding light you know can you do percentage rent or you know if it's a really like one space that you may put in your budget that okay we're going to do this below market rate and that's so that way we can you know try to like really create a renaissance in this section where there's other vacancy or to show you know we do have our occupancy you know maintained because you know when you find that right concept Sometimes they may say no, a lot of rejection I had received was because of their budget. And they're kind of surprised how much maybe is tacked on, or even if I say it's just a flat rent, you have no extras, I bill you, you're gonna have the utility company that'll be separately billed when you set it up with them. And then they'll still say, you know, cause I have your rent and then I have to, you know, pay my vendors and then pay payroll. And it's just kind of uh, working from that angle. Absolutely. Nice. No, yeah, yeah, no. And, and, and as, as you alluded to in, in that, in that insight, you know, it's, it's just, it's just based on trying to, you know, work with the other party. And, and is, is it difficult sometimes when, you know, cause that, that's a, that's a, the, the, the dichotomy almost that, you know, you're obviously working with the landlord to make sure that you're effectively filling their space and, and, you know, creating a good ecosystem for the, for the, for the, the mall or the, the environment that you're currently leasing for. But, you know, you also have to properly vet the other party to make sure that it's going to be something that works out. And, you know, obviously finances do play a role to make sure that there's a there's no, you know, issues going forward. So how, I guess how would how is that as a balancing act? Because I mean, you had mentioned you had mentioned like, you know, the photography studio that was working from home at the time. I'm sure they were very successful and they were already kind of bursting at the seams. So, you know, the proof of concept had already been, had already been established. Like, is that typically the, the type of individual that you seek out or? Right, because you know what will happen is like, when you actually look at how to vet, part of it is sometimes, because there was a time when I was making sure that because of the center I was leasing in, we would honestly check any uh, background information, like, you know, make sure the individual didn't have anything that would be a threat to the center. Um, someone that was maybe trying to come in that may be related to someone else who may have been a problem. So that way we can really change the actual atmosphere that maybe some guests stayed away from. They didn't come to the center because they felt like there was this, you know, fear and, you know, it was really to make that comfortable. So when it comes time to actually look for the concept itself, 
you know, it'll be through something that's going to be really like the level that we want. So um, sometimes you'll get a call and it's like, you know, the call of your dreams, like, yes, you know, we do want to do business with this concept and we do have this space that you're requesting. And then other times when you're actually going out and seeking it, it might be at another center where they're somewhere that might be your center's type of trajectory and uh, market. And you say, well, can you expand? And in one instance, I had a clothing store in um, Cincinnati and I had reached out to them and then they'd reached back out to me um, about like uh, nine months later. And I just said, this looks so polished, like it is a chain. And that's one of my favorite things with canvassing is like, you'll see a local concept and it's just one location, but the intricacy, as they say, the details, you know, and then like, yeah. you know, the chef's hand emoji, because what happens is you're gonna see somebody that's really a good fit with your own eyes when you're just, you know, probably even going to the grocery store or even to what I like is um, maybe like flyers because there's still mailers that come in the mailbox and someone may have one location and you want to find them, you know, are you expanding? You know, are you going to, you know, maybe think about other locations or maybe even this part of the market? Um, and then usually with social media, the way is, you know, sometimes when you're looking at certain items, that's when you're, you know, kind of, to lack of a better term, targeted on your explore page or even sponsored post. So that's another way as well. Um, looking at that and even the tag location of something is a way to see maybe a tenant that's in a market that pops up and then they tag the market's account to say, oh, I'm going to be here for the weekend, you know, come see us. So that's the way that you just keep your eyes open and know where to look to be able to find something that's going to be like really leveling up what you want. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And, and, and one of the things that I was curious about was, you know, related to the, 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 that thought process of, you know, you're, you're obviously looking, you're always constantly looking for different uses uh, that could potentially fit within a space, I guess, you know, in, in let, let's, let's just maybe take an example of what your, which the, the, the vacancies that you're currently looking to fill. If you have any at, at your current centers, like what are you currently targeting and what, what thought process led you to that realization? Yes, because that's the thing. When you get some spaces back, it may have been, because that's what I'm uh, working on now, um, a couple of uh, bigger spaces that are over 3,500 square feet. And what happens is when you have someone that moved out and they were there for a while, it suited their needs at the time they started in the space. And then in the current time, you may run into a lot of clients that say, oh, I don't need that much space, cut it in half. So that's where you have to see with your team, is this how we want to do this is split up the space or do we just honestly just, you know, keep shorter to the plow or maybe there might be a short term user we can put in there. And then in the meantime, look for a permanent use that can actually fill it because a lot of times keeping the space as is until the right user comes along has been like my entire career's experience, because if you have 4,000 square feet, you know, it's a matter of like, okay, it was more of like an industrial use. But, you know, I've targeted like, OK, this one was a restaurant. So I've gone local with all different flavors, literally, of like what food is dining only or, you know, of course, both hybrid, you know, delivery and dining. And they don't need a drive through at out parcel. They're trendy where they have a bit of a following on social media. So that's where I've been looking at different places that do um, like, you know, local like eateries or have, you know, different like if it's pizza you know, something that's not in the center, um, then I'll look for that use and, you know, the different pop-ups and pretty much just, you know, keep it nimble because if we do want to make it retail with the right use, we could do that as well. So mm -hmm. that's how I've kind of, um, you know, kind of been looking is like the hot concepts and kind of um, the restaurant retail and even like some services because I know medical is hot as well. Um, you know, we saw yeah. too, Amazon just bought one medical for a good reason. And the news that, you know, it was, you know, some competition, you know, there before they bought them. So, you know, that's, that's really where you keep your ear to the ground and see um, what makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of putting your ear to the ground, I know that, you know, I'm sure that your strategy of, of outreach to clients was quite different prior to COVID. Uh, I'm just really curious of what your, if there's a new approach that you've been doing since COVID. Um, yeah. Cause I, I, I myself had changed it up and I know Raphael has a little bit as well. So just really curious if you guys. Right. Cause you know, it's like at the very beginning I had to make sure because some clients may have like not, cause you drive through town, you would see closed 
or you yeah. would see the space dark, you know, in shopping malls and then also in outdoor locations as well. So what I had to do was make sure that I was going to lean into the usual kind of like online canvassing because there was a time um, before I joined Prime Store where you still had to work to like work for the future to say, okay, right now the world is shut down, but, you know, we'll open back up. So that's where I, you know, dove into the social media kind of online canvassing of, you know, typing in a concept and then, you know, reaching out via social media and then, you know, kind of first seeing how are they doing and then also seeing like, you know, do they have interest to maybe at least consider something in the future when things open back up. Um, now with things, you know, being back outside, as they say, you know, I still have always kept that even back um, from years before of, you know, searching with articles that talk about hot concepts folks that are expanding and you know they get that word out of how many units they want to do um yeah. because that's really where marketing dollars are going as well and that's where you have to be as a leasing person is where are concepts getting the word out that they exist so that's where i've really kept it to that and uh the advertisements in the um um on the kind of websites that you visit you might be going for one thing and then you'll see you know like uh this article or even google search they'll have an ad at the top so that way that helps you to kind of keep in the loop, maybe where your eyes may not be, but it can guide you to it. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like how you, you started out, like when you call someone that you're, it, it's a personable approach, you know, you're asking them just like any other human beings, like, Hey, how's it going? And like, what, what's going on in your business? And uh, you know, how can I help type thing? So I really, that that's, uh, that's amazing that you do that. Cause I know, um, a lot of people just like to jump straight into business and and skip over that part so it's like a commercial just, like a like a like a what do, you, what do you call it the just running through the, the script a lot of times yeah it's not and you have to and 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 we're service professionals right we were trying to serve uh, our clients and you know part of that part of that is really getting an understanding of what the problems that you're you're identifying a problem and then trying to provide a solution that ultimately solves that problem so right. listening is the most valuable thing you could possibly do Exactly. Because that's the where it starts, because in the business, it is all about relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's how it happens, because there's a genuine interest and concern with the individual you're talking with and having a relationship with. And it's not talking at them. It's talking with them and being able to establish that. Honestly, like what's going to be long term when you actually do have the give and take and maintenance of the relationship. So, you know, that's really how things get done. And you know, you pretty much just uh, go from there after that, because that's one of the things that I had to learn early in my career is every connection you make may not turn into a deal. And yeah. honestly, when you start out maybe helping them, because I actually did that yesterday, there was a client we had talked for a good half an hour and uh, they wanted space. I didn't have, it, everything didn't check all the boxes, but I said, you know what though, I'm going to help you by sending this insurance contact info to be able to allow you to see about it and that was honestly just a good value add because I saw a need there to get him contact info for insurance carrier. They may go somewhere else or they may boomerang back maybe a year later. And, but you have to understand that like, that's going to be a good memory that can actually pay dividends because there's yeah. just a genuine interest. And then if there is a deal that comes out of it, okay. You know, and then if not, you know, that's okay too. Yeah. yeah. You just well, keep it on to the next one. <laughs> and being yeah. that being that connector is like so undervalued. It's unbelievable. I mean, the, the, you want the, you want your clients to, if if your if their foot hurts, you want them to call you about. Hey, do you have a recommendation for you know podiatrists? Like that's the type of if you have that type of relationship with someone, you're their trusted advisor, and you know they're gonna do business with you long term for a long period of time. So I mean. That, that's the type of model that, you know, I, I try to follow is like, if I can be of value to you in any possible way, don't hesitate to reach out. I have a commercial contacts list. I have all these different things that I can provide you as a service professional so that you know that I'm your trusted person and they're more likely to go refer business to you if they believe that to be the case as well. So yeah, yes. um, they sure yeah. do. Yes. It's awesome. You know, because you do make great people and then parlay it from there, you know, honestly see the person, and everything else follows that. Absolutely. No, some great insights there. One thing I was curious about, and this is this is super interesting about your background, is that you actually are in the modeling and, and commercial space, if I'm not mistaken. You've done yes. some of that. So kind of curious about how you got into that. And, and, and has have you learned or have there any been any lessons that you've learned from those that experience that has translated to what you're doing 
on the, the brokerage side? Honestly, so it's, it's great because I've had a passion for both for a long time. Mm-hmm. So the thing is that, you know, at the time that I, you know, so in Columbus, um, I knew that I wanted to be in the entertainment business back mm-hmm. um, when I was a child. So honestly, that was one of the first passions I had. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I was hearing, because honestly, my teacher who was a skills for the workplace teacher uh, is a former actress. So when I was in high school, you know, she actually said that her mother told her, like, don't know if you're going to want to be in acting because the work isn't steady. So honestly, that has always run clear to me. And I understood that as well. So it was always intended to like, okay, I can do entertainment and then also to, you know, do my other passion in the shopping center business. So when I came um, out to LA, I had already had um, some commercial and movie roles that I had done. And what's good about that is, you know, out here in the Los Angeles market, it does help me to understand when I do parking and filming deals, because that is very prevalent here. So one of the things I'm very proud of is uh, being told that um, one of my properties is film friendly because of the opportunity to actually be there and understanding the workings of it, you know, the space that, you know, the talent space for creativity and then the actual facilities to be able to provide that. So that's one of the good things about it is like further relationship building and understanding too that like when you actually see the opportunity for the parking and filming deal, that's another opportunity to be able to offer something from your property that is a value and being able to, you know, have a good word around about like what we do and then other location managers want to work with you as well. And, you know, pretty much it's just, you know, great to say, oh yeah, you know, this show or this commercial film there. So you know, I love it on both sides, both the deal making side and in front of the camera. I bet it's a good selling proposition too. Like yeah. if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm looking at a couple of centers to to locate and, you know, you, you, you kind of bring up some of that stuff. Like I, I can't say it wouldn't come into my thought. It's like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Like it's a, it's a marketing uh, opportunity as well. Cause I'm sure, you know, you can incorporate that in your social or whatever else. So. Yes. Cause yeah. that's the thing is that, now more than ever, like, cause we saw that during the pandemic of like the uh, temporary patios out on the street and on the uh, yeah. sidewalks. And that was a way for creativity of like, how else can space be used that's not being utilized right now? So that was an example of, okay, that's something that does need to be used, does need to occur to, you know, further like keep a business ingratiated. So on a shopping center level, that's actually, you know, what we've done. And I've learned that since being out here for four years of, You have an opportunity for filming and parking, and they do like your center. They do like um, the area and is keeping jobs. So that's another like, you know, outside of myself, relationship building is that's a way for the entertainment industry to have jobs in L.A. Because, you know, there's so many great things that they're working on, you know, with um, incentives and such to be honestly in their backyard in Hollywood. And that just is, you know, great to provide with our uh, some of the opportunities. Absolutely. And is the, are there leasing, do they lease the space on site or how, how does that typically work? Is it just like a contract that says, Hey, you can film here for, you know, I, yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Out, out of, yeah. Out of, yeah. yeah. So that's actually what happens is um, when it's actual filming deal, sometimes a lot of times it'll be actually parking with it as well. So there is a section of the parking lot that I'm allotted at one of my properties where it can be um, carnival circus or actual like um, parking for the crew as well as their trucks or the staging area for uh, some of the talent to go. So, you know, talent being, you know, folks that are on camera. So then also inside the mall, if there's vacant space and they do want it, then that's leased as a part of the deal as well for however duration they needed to film. And, you know, that's the thing, like I've had like uh, three or four of those deals already where uh, they wanted to come in, use space and be able to film you know, and then we'll come to an agreement if they want to use the common area of the mall. So it all works with that different combinations of actually, you know, what their needs are and what we can accommodate and, you know, work to make the deal happen. Yeah. That, that's awesome because, you know, yeah. there's so, such creative uses that, 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 that have come about throughout just the years. One of our, one of my clients, we sold a shopping center to here in Louisville uh, that he, he signed a contract with a, a medical clinic that was like a mobile medical clinic. And they just, they post up in the corner of a parking lot and they signed a, like a year lease or whatever. And they're paying like a pretty penny to be over there, but they want to be in that area because there's super high traffic. And there's a, there's a draw in the rear of the center because it's a pediatric clinic. So there's a lot of people going in there for medical related uses already. And they see this, 
you know, clinic for, you know, vaccines and, and other, other, I think they had some other, you know, things they were offering as well. So it, it kind of is tailored specifically to their clientele and they're paying a pretty significant portion just to occupy some of the parking lot and to have like four or five or six dedicated spaces. So yes. it's very interesting. Yes. Cause that model is significant because now more than ever, there's demand for the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've seen is like more and more. It's like so many, and especially in San Fernando Valley, that's just a hotbed for activity of if you want to do a carnival circus, if you do have filming needs, and that's where you utilize it. You know, you do have different vehicles to be able to have different clients that you, you know, different scale of clients to be able to uh, successfully monetize it to, you know, meet goals and be able to use what might just be vacant space for uh, good use. Absolutely. I always wondered that. I appreciate you uh, letting us know how that actually happens. You know, you see it in the movies that they're running through a mall chasing a guy and you're like, how, how can they do that? And right. I mean, like, I recognize that mall. How are they doing this? Right, yeah, right. So, yeah. <laughs> it is. That's good. awesome. It is it's awesome because that's an opportunity unto itself. Yeah. Um, a little bit of like, you know, as they say, like stardust on it, you know, and then yeah. you have that things work out for it. And it's like, hey, you know, this is, you know, it's a, it happens all over the country, but it's special in L.A. as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Matt, I, before we start rounding out the questions here, I just want to say we really appreciate your time that you came on and sharing your experience and stuff and your wisdom. Uh, I know people are going to find what you said and uh, want to contact you for sure. But uh, so one of the questions that we start out with is, uh, Raphael and I are both avid readers, and uh, we actually, you know, the question is, is what is one of the most impactful books? And it doesn't have to pertain to commercial real estate. Um, it can just be anything at any point in your life that kind of maybe changed your, changed your life and headed a different direction. Honestly, um, as our team right now is reading Vital Factors, Vital Factors is very relevant and impactful because it is a guide of how anybody that wants to have different systems in place for the organization and leadership that they seek from each individual on their team. So um, the book was written um, back in 2006, 2007, and it still does work to this day of the different um, capacity that each individual has to be able to utilize it within decision making every day and you know going with the team for a decision so instead of like one person that's going to be the captain it is honestly having the empowerment of each team team member to be able to control whatever their task is be able to give that recommendation and say you know i think for this task which maybe the person owns we should do this sometimes it's actually put to the team as actually like you know what are we going to do to actually you know solve this problem and that's really how it's done. So it's going back to the teamwork of getting, of truly making the dream work and being able yeah. to, you know, have an accomplishment, no matter if it's revenue related, if it's, you know, trying to get um, a system organized, um, Vital Factors is, you know, very well laid out with uh, the MAP system and uh, trying to empower everybody. That's phenomenal. Nice. It, so from, I, I don't know, I haven't read the book. Um, so is it more of like a teamwork book or is it for like leadership? building or both honestly it is both because what happens is you know there would be different there's different stories in the book that talk about someone that you know was faced with a different business challenges that actually needed to be solved and upon that they actually don't try to solve it themselves because there's a portion of the book that talks about the like big red s you know like superman or superwoman where someone's trying to just you know actually tackle it themselves so before there's anything done to just, okay, what, what do I do? That's where it's actually presented to the individual or the team that says, okay, this is a situation that we have where, you know, this is the revenue that we want to clear, that we want to go and we want to hit, or even like debt we want to erase. How do we do this? You know, what are we going to actually be able to achieve? Um, another instance might be if it's just the efficiency of it, there's maybe a lack of efficiency, maybe between departments, or maybe if it's customer service facing, how do we make that experience better? You know, like what are the challenges? And then what, what does each team member recommend to make that happen? So it's, it's honestly a book that I think a lot of leaders have read to be able to know how to run their business most efficiently. And then it is impactful with each individual on the team as well to kind of have an entrepreneur mindset 
entrepreneurship mindset. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, well it's yeah. going to be on my reading list, and I know Jeff is going to probably buy it too. That's yeah. one of the. That, that's I, yeah, I wrote it down. Yeah, that's like yeah. one of the one of the selfish things that we get to do is we get to ask people who are very successful in what they do to provide us with insights, and you know the books that they read are obviously a big reason why they're you know able yeah. to achieve the heights they are. So we do greatly appreciate the the share of, of that book, and you know we're yeah. looking forward to diving in and checking it out. Uh, one thing that I'd like to ask uh, prior to prior to hopping off the call is related to we have something called the commercial real estate treasure chest. It's a repository of resources that we make available to our audience. And, you know, we've had guests in the past contribute helpful PDFs, Excel sheets, some people have written ebooks. So really anything that you feel would be of value to the audience. So I don't know, you know, if I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of share what you're willing to contribute today. Yes. So I am um, going to be very unique than maybe what your guests in the past have contributed but there are constant websites and everything that I keep current with to be able to know what's going on in the world of business and you know real estate and restaurant retail. So the first one that I've um, had for years in my inbox and I uh, love their website because it gives you the headlines all in one place is called Plain Vanilla Shell. So Plain Vanilla Shell is the website. And when you sign up for their mailing list that actually every Thursday night um, it's honestly about like, I think like uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time and about like 7 p.m. Eastern. That's when it'll come into your inbox, a nice kind of lead into the Friday or weekend and gives you a rundown of all the headlines of like who's expanding, um, who announced their actually you know, their sales have soared. And it just gives you really like a big snapshot of all the concepts, QSR, retail, of what they're doing and what kind of expansion mode that they're in. And if unfortunately, maybe there's some that are closing locations, it gives you that knowledge as well. So plain vanilla shell, um, you know, definitely recommend that, um, you know, it's mailing list that definitely keeps you on top of it. And then the second one um, is actually an app that I had downloaded called Seeking Alpha. And it's great because the really like most useful way to utilize it is putting in your companies of interest their ticker symbol of either NASDAQ or NYSE, New York Stock Exchange. And you're going to be able to get a list of different type of headlines. And even too, when you um, actually enable the notifications of, you know, news about what they're doing in their industry, maybe what their fellow competitors are doing. So that way you can keep in the loop real time about any kind of decisions and where they're opening and it's like so helpful. It's it's both good for the companies themselves and even sometimes any kind of consumer activity that you want to know about that helps to push how consumers are spending their money and where they're going, like in terms of entertainment and uh, their uses that um, money is spent on. Nice. Um, yeah, we I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, and, and and I haven't heard about the first website, so I'm I'm probably going to sign up for their 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 email list. And and, and is it related primarily to retail? Yes, uh, because Plain Vanilla Show also has like a free membership. I think you can like sign up and then there's like a more premium plan for a cost. And that's what it is. Um, you know, the restaurant business, primarily there, of course, um, any kind of like shoe related news. Uh, I think they may even tie in with anything that may be overseas because, you know, you have some that have um, ascended on um, America, like uh, Primark and Zara. And, you know, if there's any news like that, you'll get that. So it's so helpful. I love it. Yeah, I love retail. I mean, that's kind of yeah. what I'm focusing on. So I'd love, I'd love to sign up for that. That's awesome. Oh, it's great. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. Well, again, Matt, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, I know there's going to be obvious members who's going to want to contact you. So what's the best way they can reach out to you? Yes. Um, so I am like on all social media platforms. Um, so it is on LinkedIn. Honestly, if you type in the search bar, Matt Ridley Real Estate, that's where you're going to be able to find hopefully me uh, towards the top or uh, Matt Ridley, uh, Culver City. So uh, that's the way you'll be able to connect with me there. I'm always happy to. Um, so between that and honestly, anything that people may have um, with, because, you know, tell me to think. So I think that's the best way because, you know, social media kind of stays out there. So, you know, DM me or, you know, send me a, a request to connect. Um, probably um, I actually do, you know, like to be in touch um, in person. So that's another way too. If you're at an ICSC or ULI event, um, you know, you might be at the prime store booth and, uh, connecting in person is also great. That's, that's phenomenal. Yeah, thanks. 
That's phenomenal. And what we'll go yeah. ahead and do, guys, so if you guys are listening, we'll be including that in the show notes. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, feel free to go to the description. You'll be able to access all that information. And if you guys are listening to this in a Spotify, Apple podcast, really any other podcast format, it'll be in the description as well. So Matt, thank you so much for stopping by. We really do appreciate your time. I know you're super busy and I, yeah. we do value the insights that you share with our audience. Uh, for those of you guys who are listening to the podcast, we would greatly appreciate if you could drop us a five-star review. We've seen a significant uptick in our downloads as a result of you guys doing so. So we would greatly appreciate it if you could take your time to do so. Along with that, share it with someone you know. Uh, as, as we always have great guests that have phenomenal insights, we want to make sure that this reaches the broadest audience possible. Along with that, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, we would greatly appreciate it if you can like and subscribe. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So thanks again so much for stopping by, and we'll see you all next time.